Hello, hello. All right, guys, we're going to get started. Come on in if you're out in the back. Uh, I just want to welcome you here to New Points Church. If you're joining us online, we welcome you there as well. I know the sun is out shining, very beautiful today, isn't it? Amen. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm like, finally, yay, sunshine. I love sunshine. Um, so let's pray, and um, we'll just have a couple quick announcements. Father God, we are just so truly thankful to hear how you continue to work in our midst, in the lives of different people in our church, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would come here today, right now, and that um, you would just inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. May we go out of here different, because we encountered the Holy Spirit's presence. In your name we pray, amen. I don't have a slide, but I do want to give you an update of our roof. You know, it, it, it rains outside and our ceilings don't. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They're like 99% done. They got some siding that they have to do up on the, the roof. And then it will be 100% complete. They were an extreme pleasure to work with. Ridiculously fast. Ridiculously efficient. Um, and just just a pleasure to do business with. Um, I would highly recommend Rapid Roofing because they were very wonderful to us, uh, very kind and um, patient, and um, worked around different things. And they just they had like 50 people up there working, and they was just very professional. And we are just so truly thankful to have a very secure roof that does not leak now. Amen. Yeah. Woo. -hoo. You have no idea, you know, we had the taxes here, you know, and how frustrating it would be when they'd come in and be like, um, yeah, Pastor Robin, um, would you mind grabbing another bucket because it's leaking over here now, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, 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 you know what I mean? So now I'm like, yeet, you know, so I actually hugged them and told them thank you for m making my roof stop leaking. So just so be thankful for that. Um, we're so truly grateful. If you're a first-time guest here or maybe you've been here for a few weeks, um, hopefully that you've took the time. There should be a connection card on your bulletin that you're handed. If you could fill that out and turn that into the welcome desk at the back, they have a gift for you, but it's just a way for us to have your information. So if we need to get a hold of you for something or or just so that if we, we sometimes we send out cards and, and so forth to welcome you for being a part of our congregation, it's just a way for you for us to have that information. I promise nobody strange is going to show up at your door or anything weird, okay? Um, there are four ways to give to New Points Church. If you um, you have the offering stations here um, on site, that right here and here, you can download an app on your phone called Tithely, and you just look up New Points Church, and you can give electronically. You can go to the our website and do the same thing. Um, and if you're in, if you're joining us online and you'd like to mail in a check, you can do that too as well. Um, so just so you know, we do have the blessing of the bikes coming um, May 5th. We're very excited about that. Now we're going to need some help with that. You know, and, and you, you I'll oversee this is Pastor Bob, and he's got some couple people helping him. But he's going to have an informational meeting for anyone who would like to help in any way, shape, or form next Sunday immediately after service. So stay right after service. Um, we're going to need help with, like, people to help with, like, some parking because there's going to be a lot of park uh, bikes, right, and, you know, since it's Biker Sunday. And we're going to need to make sure that we have, like, Pacific area for the bikes to park, and we're guiding them um, where to park and extra greeters to just float around people to help you know, slug the food out to the back because we're going to be grilling and having, you know, doing what we do. We like to eat around here. Um, so there is a QR code that you'll see floating around in the bulletin and on your little tables. If you scan that, you can, you can sign up to volunteer or just let Pastor Bob know that you're planning to help to stay after church on Sunday because he's going to feed you too. Yes, I am. All right. So this that's worth, the, I always say, that's a worth the price of admission, right? You're going to get free food, right? So stay after church on Sunday next week, get some free food, and, you know, volunteer to help with uh, May 5th, uh, Blessing the Bikes. So that should be very exciting. All right. When we get to that side, okay? <laughs> go ahead. All right. Go on. So 
just a, a praise. We have Bibles we have had donated to pass out to those that are here that Sunday on Bible Sunday. Little ones and big ones, female and male. I thought that was pretty neat. And if you don't, I want to take some flyers, I have a whole bunch of flyers left yet. Take a sack with you to your job, uh, to your neighbor. If you know somebody that uh, has a, a, a biker crew, uh, a few bikes that they ride with, take these home with you and give them to them. I've got them. See me after church. So absolutely, we want to be inviting our friends, family, co-workers, neighbors, you know, the guy at, on the corner. It doesn't matter. Just invite anybody. If, if you see somebody, right now the bikes are going to be out today. It's nice. So if you see somebody, just walk up, say, hey, my church is doing this. We'd like for you to join us. So, all right. So May 5th, plan to be here. So that day, also, we're going to have a luncheon on May 5th, right directly after that service for the entire church that's here. Um, so we need people to help bring us dishes with that. We're going to have some hamburgers and hot dogs with it, but we're going to need some people to bring dishes as well. So if you can sign up to bring a dish, um, like a hot side dish, a cold side dish, you know, water, um, two liters of pop, that kind of thing. You can scan our QR code or go on our website and um, sign up to bring a dish. If you don't know how to do that, just see someone that knows how to do that. And I'm one of them. You can, I'll come and help you. Just let me know. So we're going to make sure that we have a lot of really good food that day because um, we like to eat, right? And we're going to have hamburgers and hot dogs that day. What you want? I don't know. What are you having? All right. I, I was like, steak, shrimp, no. Chicken. Can, Candace has already requested the shrimp thing. All right. All right. So as you know, we do have our roof that went on, so we're going to be doing a few fundraisers here and there because I want to knock out that loan. It's $29,750 as quickly as possible because I don't want that debt um, hanging over our head for very long or hindering any kind of ministry that God wants to do th in and through us. So one of the things that we're going to be doing, um, Colleen, she sells Sensi. Wave your hand over there. And we're, she's uh, offered to sell these Sensi circles. They, they're, they're little cool little things. You can hang them in your, like, car windows or you can put them in, like, drawers at home. And just so they smell really good. And so you can buy six Sensi circles for $20, and $5 of that comes directly back to the church. Now, there's order forms on the back fo uh, table back there. You can place an order for yourself, but what would be even great is if you took this order form and asked your friends and family to also purchase some of these. Trust me, people love these, and so um, it's a great way to, to just knock out that uh, roof loan quick. We're going to collect orders in um, up to May 5th. So, and the information about what each scent smells like is on the back and the, the scents that are available. Like I said, they, if you want to know what they look like, they kind of look like these different things. There's different colors, different smells, um, and so they're great. You can do it for Mother's Day, get people a gift. I think that's it. Okay. All right, God is good. And all the time, we've got a little treat for you all. It, by uh, popular demand and request, we're going to show this video. Go ahead. <laughs> Silas's lead there. Let's stand to your feet and it's let's good. praise the Lord. Come on. It's a good thing he takes after his dad. Let everything that has breath. Come on. That has breath. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Let praise everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on. I praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. I praise when I'm short and praise when I'm doubting. Come on! I praise when I'm numbered, praise when surrounded. Cause praise is a water, my enemies drowning. Come on! 
let's make that our prayer today. Hallelujah. In the crushing, in the grassing. making a new wine skin for his church and I'm going to ask Jake Jake can you continue to play for us please mm. I feel so strongly that there are some folks in here that might not understand what this song means so I just want to clarify some things We are asking the Holy Spirit to do something new and I think you know, we were just talking about this in our class. We, we know what we know, but we definitely don't know what we don't know. And that seems kind of obvious. But when we are asking God something new, that takes a level of faith and trust that maybe not all of us have just yet. But we serve a God who is so good and so gentle, he can wait. <laughs> and he is patiently waiting for us to trust him with the new and to trust him with our hurt and our pain see i'll be a little vulnerable i'll be honest with you i have a history of running from my pain i keep myself very busy i add a lot of things to my day because i don't want to slow down and think about the pain and i think some of us can resonate a little bit with that the holy spirit wants to make something new and um, for anyone who doesn't know about gardening or maybe even the, the making of wine, right? There's some pruning in the process. There's a lot of pulling out the old and the dead. And that's a process that is vital for growth. That is a process for, that is vital for new fruit to grow and flourish. And so I believe that God is wanting to pull out all that old all of those things that maybe we're used to, the things that we know, the things that we're holding on to, but the things that are so dead that we can't produce the fruit that God wants to produce. And he's saying, I want to give you new. 
and you don't know what it is and that's okay. I have something that is new that you have never seen before, that you have never experienced before, that you may not have ever even heard of before. It is new and you do not need to be afraid of it. Allow him to pull out the dead, allow him to pull out the unfruitful old vines that are not producing any fruit because <laughs> we're trying to grow we're trying to flourish surrounded by all of these dead vines all of these dead thoughts these lies these things that the enemy has allowed us to to grow around or try to grow but it's just a struggle it's not getting us anywhere but i do truly believe this that god is wanting so desperately to show us something new but you gotta let them pull out all that old all that dead and allow him to give you the freedom that you're looking for the truth that you're looking for hallelujah lord we thank you so much you are the best gardener that we could have ever asked for god you know exactly what we need to grow, what we need to produce new fruit, fruits of your spirit, God. And so, Lord, I just pray that as we continue in this service and as we continue throughout this week, Lord, will you show us what are those old dead ways of thinking, ways of living that are keeping us from growing and flourishing and producing the new wine, the new fruit that you are trying to show us, God, that you are trying to grow for our good, for our good. Lord, help us to learn how to trust the gardener with the process. I hear that so strongly. Trust the gardener with the process. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the praise and we thank you so much for what you're doing and what you're going to do, God. We love you so much. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, if you agree, just say amen. And you may be seated. Thank you. In the beginning, God created the sun, moon, and stars, the animals, trees, and seas. And he made us his own. And he gave us a garden. And there was beauty and peace and life, but that wasn't enough. And so we sinned and we ate and we fell. And where there was once beauty and peace and life, there was now pain and chaos and death. We went from a garden to a grave. But God promised to bring us back back from the grave into the garden. Days, weeks, years, generations of waiting for the promise, the promise to come back to the garden. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus, friend of sinners, man of sorrows, Lord of glory and light of the world, rejected, refused, condemned and crucified, buried in a borrowed tomb, forsaken and forgotten. But three days later, he stepped out of his grave and into a garden and the same will be true of all who trust him. Where there is pain and chaos and death, there will be beauty and peace and life. Because Jesus is alive, so is hope, so is grace, so is salvation, so is transformation. Because Jesus is alive, we can step out of the grave and into the garden. Got to turn myself on there. <laughs> My young ones are dismissed. I think they're already gone, but I don't know. <laughs> they, they're faster than me, especially since I'm getting more wisdom, more wisdom on my head. They're faster than me. Huh? 
All right, we've been in a sermon series called uh, Graves to Gardens, and man, it has been awesome, hasn't it? Uh, the key verse is John 19, 41, and it says, at the place where Jesus was crucified was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Uh, this was no ordinary grave. Uh, this was uh, Jesus. Jesus' grave was remembered. It was celebrated. It's still remembered today all over the world. His death, his uh, life, his resurrection, the empty tomb is something that marked in time. Jesus is alive, right? Jesus defeated sin and he defeated death and it changed everything as we know it. It changed us. It changed uh, the people around us. Transforming of change is the power of faith. Uh, when we think about that idea of faith, uh, it, when we uh, place our faith, our hope, our trust in Jesus Christ, there's new life available. Uh, when we talked about new life this morning and the, the gardener and uh, the plant, uh, man, Paul puts it this way. He says, when, uh, I'm going to say it in my own words, but uh, when people put their faith in Jesus, they become new creations. Uh, and I know for me, when I put my faith in Jesus, I became different. I became uh, uh, closer to God. I, I seen God more. I realized who God was. I realized that he actually loves me and that I could actually have a relationship with him. So it's awesome when we uh, realize that, you know, Jesus can make us a new creation. Uh, the gardener, uh, the garden, uh, the first garden was a beautiful place, uh, Adam and Eve lived in the garden so many years ago without sin, and they walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. This was a garden that was beautiful, and sin entered the world uh, being out of the will of God. Uh, they did something that God didn't want them to do, and there was spiritual death in that. Uh, when we think about spiritual death, it's uh, being uh, not spiritually connected with our Lord or being separated from our Lord. Uh, the relationship was broken, and it was in despair. And when we think about uh, this garden, man, it, it was beautiful. It was awesome. And, we, and they could no longer walk in this garden. When we think about gardens today, when we walk through the garden, there are places where we uh, see beautiful flowers. And uh, sometimes there are places where we rest, right, or we relax or uh, even get away from life, right? Uh, sometimes when you're in the garden, you just sit back in your chair and uh, for me, I, I'm probably drinking Coke. I don't know what you guys drink, but uh, just relax and forget about life sometimes in a garden, don't we? Uh, his broken body and his shed blood paid the price for our forgiveness and our sin. That, that forgiveness and sin is uh, the things that we do that are not of God or that are out of his will that he don't want us to do. Uh, not being able to live up to God's standard. Jesus changed that for us. Jesus restored that. Uh, Jesus' body laid in a grave in the middle of a garden uh, near uh, the place where he was crucified. Uh, it was the second garden, and new creation took place in the second garden as Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, it was new life for us. It was new uh, connection of that relationship. And, and when we think about this idea of his tomb being in the garden, uh, the first place he went when he came out of the tomb was through the garden, right? Uh, he stepped foot in the garden, uh, man, and... This was no ordinary grave. This became a place remembered, celebrated, and we still celebrate it today. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about depending on the gardener, uh, reliance or relying on the gardener, trusting in the gardener. Uh, dependence is uh, reliance, and uh, it's a depending or trusting in someone or something. Um, T 
to stay rooted in the garden, to stay in those garden places of life. Uh, where we feel like uh, everything is okay, where we feel like no matter what happens, uh, we can make it through it, right? Or we can come on the other side of it. Uh, We have to learn how to depend fully on the gardener, Jesus. Uh, And we're going to look at the scripture, Mark 2, 1 and 2, and this is a story, uh, a very good story of where Jesus healed somebody. And we're going to look at it from a few different views and kind of get this idea of the gardener and, uh, man, that we need to uh, keep the gardener close to us in our lives. Mark 2, uh, 1 and 2 says this, and again, he entered Capernaum after some days. And it was heard that he was in the house. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no room to receive them, not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. Uh, Being self-reliant pulls our focus away from the gardener, gardener, away from Jesus uh, and man, so many people were gathering. Uh, Jesus uh, uh, had already done some ministry, had already healed some people, and they knew who he was, and they were starting to gather around and get closer to him. And this is a large crowd that gathered, and he's in the house, right? Uh, today in the world, when we look around, uh, there are many things that we look at, and it seems like that uh, we are all geared or we are all all uh, uh, born with this self-reliance, aren't we? Uh, We want to be self-reliant in our own powers, our own resources, and and not really rely on that of Christ, don't we? In today's world, when we look around, there's a lot of uh, self-centeredness, a lot of self-reliance, a lot of uh, self-significance to people. Uh, And uh, I think it's one of the things that we all struggle with at times. Uh, We were talking about it this morning that, uh, you know, we all want to be self-reliant in some way. When we look at children, they they always say what? I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. Right? I mean, it's geared in us when we're younger. We might be taught that uh, everything revolves around us or everything uh, that all the choices we make revolve around us. But we want to get this idea that we need the gardener to grow, not only in life, but spiritually and mentally. And man, he can change things in our lives that help us to uh, see things different, to help us to uh, look in different places for uh, the healings that we need. So they were following Jesus, the one who could change everything, right? Um, (laughs) Everyone follows something, don't we? Uh, Some of us follow uh, the things we like. Some of us follow people. Some of us follow friends. Some of us follow people. something that's popular in culture. Some of us follow a desire. Some of us follow hockey teams. Some of us follow the Lions. <laughs> they were pretty good for a minute, right? <laughs> but I mean, seriously, everybody follows something. But one of the things uh, that helps us grow spiritually and that helps us move through life and that uh, heals us physically, mentally is God. When we follow someone or something, we put our focus there, don't we? Uh, I remember when I was younger, I loved to go fishing. Some of you know, I still love to go fishing. I love to uh, get out in the boat and float. I could live out on the boat, even in Michigan. Some of you are like, it's cold in the winter. I could do it. (laughs) I love the boat, right? Uh, And uh, in my younger years, I, I, I... Man, I followed people who fished, right? Uh, And I know that uh, when you're fishing for walleye, you follow the crowd because that's where the school of fish is. They're they're in the crowd, right? (laughs) They know where to go. You don't have to really look when you, at least around here. If you're in a lake, it might be a little different. But when we follow something, man, we, we get to know 
uh, what they do or, or how they act or uh, what works, what don't work. We uh, long after what does work. We want to make it work, right? Uh, when we follow a trend or a culture or a desire, we want to know how they work, how they operate, what they need to make it happen, what they accumulate or, or what they work for, don't we? Uh, when we spend time or uh, following things uh, that keep us from growth, though, uh, sometimes it, it uh, steals our time. Sometimes it steals our desires to follow the gardener. Sometimes it de- just the plans of everything in life steal our time, and, and we lose time to spend with the gardener. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, people uh, can uh, fill our schedules, and we can just overlook the gardener. The problem is we crowd out Jesus in life so the gardener can't grow us, don't we? And uh, it's okay to follow some things. It's okay to have some fun. It's okay to have those places where you relax or just uh, forget about everything, forget about life. But the most important thing is that we don't let it crowd out Jesus the gardener. Make time to focus on Jesus. Make time to, to uh, set aside time to pray with him, to walk with him, to have that relationship with him. Our self-reliance that is geared in us, uh, the devil uses in a way to steal our time, to steal uh, the, the presence that we can have with Jesus, to steal our prayer time, to steal our life. I know that sometimes we look back and we think that uh, something happened yesterday, and then we think that it happened a day ago, and then we think that, uh, uh, you know, it's only been a week, and then before you know it, your grandson's a year old, and then before you know it, they all... All your kids move out of the house. And it's like, you see, the devil will steal our time in that way. And, and we will turn around and we will look and we will say, what happened to life? Because I got way more gray hair than <laughs> when I first came to the Lord. <laughs> I got way more gray hair than the first time I stepped in the boat. And, and I look back and I realize that... Time isn't stopping, but the devil seems to stop it for us so we don't rely on Jesus, the gardener, doesn't he? Uh, Colossians 3, 1 and 2 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. It doesn't mean that we have to set our minds on uh, uh, things above and not have fun with some of the earthly things. Uh, God blesses his children and he allows us to have some fun in life. And and I believe that he loves when we have some fun in life. But uh, the idea here is we need to set our hearts and minds on things above. Uh, The writer's given us this idea, set your heart on things above. And when I thought about that, man, when we think about setting our hearts on something, what happens? We love it, right? When we set our hearts on something, we, we ha- pay attention to it. We want to uh, dig into it deeper. We want to know it more. We want to run after it. We have a passion for it, right? So when we think about setting our, our hearts on Jesus, we need to run after him. We need to uh, set our hearts on getting to know him, getting to know his words, the way he's, he acted, getting to know how he treated things, getting to know the principles that he moved and walked and lived by. Uh, some of those things come to mind when we set our hearts on something. Man, we love it, don't we? What is one thing that you love? One thing that you love? Put that in your mind. Do you set your heart on it? I know when I was younger, man, I set my heart on fishing. All the shows on the TV were about fishing. 
reading. All the books that I tried to read, because I don't read very well. Uh, I look at pictures, though. Sometimes pictures work. <laughs> so I would look for books with a lot of pictures, right? But, I mean, you can, <laughs> you can get through a book with pictures. But one thing I learned is I bought a bike one time, and I was putting it together, and it said it was a boy's bike. And I figured, well, you know, uh, you know, I don't read very good, and I, I, I'm very good mechanically. I can fix about anything. When I was this big, I was tearing apart my toys, and I'm uh, putting different wheels on them and uh, fixing them up, making them faster, whatever. Uh, but you know what I found out was is, is sometimes we need uh, directions. We need stuff on paper. I, I bought this boy's bike, and it, it was a sweet bike. It was one of those stingrays. You guys know what a stingray is? Oh, well, there's the old stingray. This was the new stingray. Not quite the same as the old one that we remember when we were kids, if you have some wisdom like me. But uh, the new kind, right? And, and I get this bike out, and I start putting it together. And, you know, my boy was maybe this tall, and, and uh, it's going to be cool. We can ride together, right? Well, I just want to say that uh, I didn't read the directions. I just threw it together because I'm mechanically inclined, and I know bikes, and I built bikes. Bikes when I was younger, I took pieces of everybody's bike and put a mongoose together, uh, and the mongoose was expensive. I didn't have money for that, but I paid a dollar or two for a few pieces, and I built one. Uh, so, uh, you know, because my first bike, I think I broke that one in half when I was jumping these. Uh, we didn't jump normal ramps. We jumped hills, dude, and I'm talking we would fly 10 feet in the air. And when I came down, I broke one bike in half and I figured I need a better one, right? But anyways, um, so I built this bike and I realized that, that the, the brake line was in the wrong spot. You couldn't steer it. <laughs> You see, sometimes we need directions. Sometimes we need to, to read the directions, right? <laughs> and, and then I put my boy on it, and he couldn't even reach the pedals. <laughs> sometimes we just need <laughs> written word. Sometimes we need written words. <laughs> so, I mean, so when we think about this idea of putting our hearts on things above, and, and then we look at the next line, and it says, set your minds on things above. And, and I thought about that. I'm like, well, if you set your heart on it, your mind's already on it, isn't it? I, I mean, so if you set your heart on something, and you love something, and you run after it, and you long for it, and, and you dig deep into it, and you know everything you can about it, your mind is already there. And, and doesn't mean that you can't uh, escape and have a good time sometimes with some of the things that God gives us here on earth. No, I like ice cream. My dad was talking about that this morning. But I mean, but the point is, is it can't be the overwhelming loving of your heart. It has to be Jesus, the gardener. Philippians 4 a says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent of praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen. You see, you get the point where your heart is, is where your mind already is. Amen. And that's why the scripture started out that way. Fix your heart on things above. Uh, Mark 2, uh, 3 through 5 says this. Uh, then they came to him, bringing a paraplegic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him, or near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paraplegic was lying when Jesus saw their faith. And I'm going to stop right there, and I know it's not the whole verse, but when Jesus saw their faith. You see, we need to be determined to get alone with Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, 
Mark tells us that these four men, they bring this paralyzed man, and he's, he's on a bed, right? And they're carrying him, and they want to get to Jesus, right? They want to, they want to see Jesus with their friend because they know that Jesus is the one who has healed so many people. They know that Jesus can change the situation just by a touch of a hand or by words out of his mouth, right? And they arrive, and, and man, it had to be discouraging when they looked across the field when they were coming up on the house on the place where Jesus was and they probably couldn't even see the house because there were so many people around it wouldn't that be discouraging I mean so many obstacles were in their way and then they get there they maybe get close to the house and they can't get in because there's so many people, right? I, I don't know about you, but did you ever push your way through a crowd? <laughs> How about when the little, <laughs> I remember one time I, I got separated from mom and dad. <laughs> you ever get separated from mom and dad when you were little? <laughs> In a crowd, <laughs> and you're running and you're looking, right? Uh, it, it's fearful. It's an obstacle, isn't it? I mean, so they come to this house and they can't get in. <laughs> and this is a big crowd. And there's people everywhere. <laughs> and they probably, uh, they're pushing their way through the crowd. Did you ever do that? Feel like you're this big? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> right? <laughs> But you know what? They were determined, weren't they? They were determined to get to Jesus, no matter what the obstacle was, no matter what stood in their way. Look, they had to carry him there. Four men had to carry him there. No matter what was in the way, they were going to get to Jesus. And they get to this point where, what do we have to do to get to Jesus? And I remember uh, that's that willpower that we need to be with Jesus, to be alone with Jesus. My mom always taught me where there's a will, there's a way. You couldn't believe how many things were stuffed in that dishwasher. I mean, seriously, she'd be like, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> and I remember one time I helped a, some of my friends pack, and they were moving to Florida. And, they're, and they're, they get this, the biggest truck they could get, right? The biggest truck they could get. And, and uh, my mama taught me that, so I used that in life. I was like, uh, where there's a will, there were, where there's a way. We'll get everything in it. What do we got? And there was only room for the door. And she called us, and she's like, dude. Raj put stuff in our fridge. We had shoes in our refrigerator. <laughs> but everything was in there. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. We got to have this heart that, that goes beyond what we could even imagine could happen or what we could even imagine or think about and to get in Jesus' presence because he is the gardener. He is the one that grows us spiritually. <laughs> they didn't give up they cut a hole in the roof I don't know if you can cut a hole in the roof today but <laughs> the roofs were a little bit different back then and that had to be a big hole <laughs> but they didn't give up right when when everything around them looked hopeless when they looked at the situation and, and they said there's no way that we can get our friend to Jesus and there's no way that we can even get through the crowds they didn't give up they had this persistence this longing to get their friend to Jesus because they knew that Jesus was the one who could do the miracle Amen. and make it happen they were determined and because of their determination it says when Jesus saw their faith and it made me think, like, can we have faith without determination? Well, we can love some things without faith. We can love some things that we do without faith. But can we have determination? Can we have this longing? Can we have this love for the things above? 
You see, when Jesus saw their faith and their persistence in faith, you see, we can talk about faith. We can quote some good scriptures about faith. We can call ourselves Christians, preachers. I'm for myself. We can do all kinds of things and call it faith. But if there's no determination, no drive, no grit to get alone with Jesus, <laughs> is there really faith? You see, we need to desire to be in the presence of the gardener, Jesus, so that he can do the work in us. And our determination of navigating through life with him in our life gets us there. Mark 2, 5 says this. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paraplegic, son, your sins are forgiven you. <laughs> and when we look at that, we go, what? He's supposed to heal him, right? He's supposed to pick him up and make him walk right away, right? And when we look at the crowd that was in the room, there was a lot of people in the room. You see, uh, God has a greater purpose, and sometimes we don't see that purpose right away. Sometimes we overlook that purpose. Think about what happened. The four men uh, come with a purpose, right? They had this purpose to get their friend better. And man, they, they want him to walk so they can uh, do things together, so they can do life together. And man, I don't know about you, but when you struggle with things physically, it, it man... When we struggle with things physically, we can't do what we used to do. The more gray hair I get, the more th Look, when I put some mechanical parts in a car, my arms hurt. <laughs> they don't want to do nothing anymore. <laughs> but they bring him for a purpose. They want him to be healed. And Jesus is the one that can heal him. Obviously, they have seen Jesus do healings like this. But instead, he forgives his sins. And we think, man, what is this, right? And um, <laughs> Jesus gave the man what he needed Amen. spiritually. Amen. Not what he wanted physically. And you see, that's just like God. He does that to us. Uh, sometimes we go through life and uh, something is impressed upon us or something uh, bad happens in our life. And, and man, God gives us what we need spiritually to move through the storm, spiritually to move on the other side of the problem, move on the other side of what's happening in life or what we're dealing with. Man, he gives us what we need spiritually first. And when we look at all the biblical content and all the people in the Bible, he gave them what they needed spiritually first. We don't always get what we want <laughs> because God has a greater purpose that we don't see sometimes right in front of us. And sometimes that greater purpose, I don't know how many times I look back and I, and you know, things happened to me when I was younger. <laughs> Even in ministry, things happen. <laughs> and uh, I, most of you know I got kicked out of one church and I was told to get my stuff and get out and things happen and, and I couldn't understand why, you know, I was working for God and, and something like that would happen and and, you know, we don't totally understand why things in life sometimes happen. But I do know that when I look back at what happened and uh, that place that I was at, uh, I learned some things. Amen. Even though it wasn't fun, even though uh, it, it wasn't what I wanted, even though I couldn't see the greater purpose that God had in it, I see the greater purpose that God had in it now. Amen. Amen. 
Mark uh, 2, 6 through 9 says, And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Oh, see that word again, in their hearts. Um, why does this man speak blasphemy like this? Who can forgive but God alone? But immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned this within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paraplegic, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk? Um, you see, Jesus is in this house, and there's many people around, and the scribes were some of them, and, and they were these religious people, and they lived as close as they could to God, and uh, they, man, you could call them church folks if you wanted to, right? Uh, they lived as close as they could to God. They, uh, man, they made up some rules of how they could live closer to God, how they could live out what uh, the Lord wanted them to live out, how they could uh, live out the will of God. And they, man, they analyzed everything. So the, the best uh, way of living was how they would live. And so when we think about these preachers, you could say maybe they were like the pastors or the teachers, right? That's who the scribes were. They were living, they were experts in the law. And the law back then, the law of the land, it was religious. It was about God. It was living for God. They were experts in it. So they were sitting off in this corner. And, uh, you know, I think this happens a lot. And we look at it in history here, but it happens today. Uh, and, and I know that I'm not perfect, and I know that sometimes I say, some, sometimes I call Moses Noah, and uh, things happen, even if uh, God is driving you and pushing you towards something, and I think it's so we know that we're human, right? But anyways, uh, so they're off in this corner, and they're experts at law, and, and they're analyzing Jesus' words, and he said something that, like any one of us could say, Right? Your sins are forgiven. God forgives you. Uh, but, you know, they're looking at it in a different light. But uh, Jesus is making a point here that the power and authority given him, he is the same as God. He is our representation of God on earth. He has the power to not only heal uh, physically, but he has the power to heal spiritually. And he has the power to forgive sins. And, you know, Jesus can do impossible things that we don't understand sometimes and the scribes were reasoning in their hearts, and, and they were just like, we don't understand why he would forgive the sins of this man. And then they come to this conclusion, like, only God can do that, right? And uh, they had many, many doubts. And some of the doubts were because of the way they were raised or the way they lived. And, and some of our doubts come from the way we were raised and the way we were lived. Mama, all them dishes don't fit in the dishwasher. Uh, sometimes they just don't fit, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean but, but the things in our past sometimes affect our future and it, and it causes us to doubt, doesn't it? <laughs> you see... <laughs> All the things in life that we question God a lot of times are because of our doubts. And sometimes uh, reliance on Jesus uh, we need to move past some of those doubts and some of those struggles that we have and get closer to him so that he can grow us in a very different way than we already are. Um, <laughs> I doubt I could talk in front of people. You guys know the story, right? I, I don't read well. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> my, yeah, hey, my first page for my classes 
was one paragraph. <laughs> Y'all are laughing, but it's true. Like, so, I mean, but you know what? The gardener can make us move past our doubts. He can make us capable. He can make us have everything we need. He can, he can make us move through life in a different way than we thought we could live. He can make us step out of the box. And I don't know how many of us are, are here today that, that we're stuck in this box. And I'm just going to be real. Like, I went to church a long time in a box. And my box was tight, bro. I, I didn't do nothing up here. I, I, I just hid in the back. I would, I would take some trash out once in a while because I was still a good person. I mean, I was a good person. I loved, uh, you know, I love some people. I not say all people, but I love some people. <laughs> I was a good person, right? And I went to church a long time. And, and, but I was stuck in that box. And I realized that, that man, if I, if I could only get close to Jesus, like my friend who was crying out in worship, if I could only see Jesus, Jesus in that way, then, then man, would my life be different? I don't know what happened. I got gray hair. Now I talk in front of people all the time. And sometimes I can't even shut up and I'm past time already. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the point is, man, the gardener is capable of doing anything that we struggle with, anything that we doubt, anything that uh, we uh, can't handle. Uh, we can have confidence in him, Jesus he can heal us. We have seen healings here. We, someone told me about one today. Oh, man. I love to hear those stories. When God shows up and you are in his presence and you love him, he is capable of anything. He is the gardener. Amen. Uh, Mark 2, 10 and 12 says this. And I'm about to wrap up, so I'm doing good today, right? <laughs> Mark 2, 10 through 12. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paraplegic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Uh, when God shows himself to us in a personal way, <laughs> and he works in your life in, in a mysterious way, miraculous way and he helps you through things in life in an unexplainable uh, miraculous way <laughs> I can look back and say I've never seen nothing like this Amen. Uh, you see uh, Jesus has this divine power and he has this power that, that can do things that can change things he has this power that can forgive us he has this power that that can uh, make make us and mold us into uh, someone who he wants to use for his kingdom and we can't do it on our own i couldn't do it on my own i'm very smart i'm just horrible at reading uh, I don't know about you, but I took water and split it and made my car uh, save gas. Uh, not too many people can do that, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, they were all amazed. And when we get alone with God <laughs> and we drive to be in his presence, and sometimes it ain't right away. I, I don't know, many times, many times, I don't even know how many times I had the people of the church pray for me. And, 
<laughs> I, I know we, you still pray for me even though I'm fat. I'm talking about before I made a commitment to God, before he made me a new creation. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm talking about when the, when the people of God get together and they lay hands on you and he moves in a way that you can't explain. I'm talking about that, right? And I don't know how many times before I, I made a commitment to, to make Jesus the Lord of my life that, that I came up and I had people lay hands on me and, and I, I walked away with this overwhelming love and this feeling that, you know, God is going to be a part of my life and I get up the next day and I'm the same. Wow, it's really getting quiet. But you see, the one thing I missed is that persistency of getting in the Lord's presence. When you have that persistency of getting alone with God, he shows up in a miraculous way. He might have not showed up that day when they prayed for me, even though I did have a feeling. I knew he was there. Amen. Amen. He was there. His presence was there. But I didn't see the glory until later, after my persistence of driving and running after him and getting alone with him. I didn't see how things in my life uh, played out. I didn't allow the gardener to, to make and mold me. I didn't uh, stop for a minute and uh, give time to listen to him. Amen. And when you do that, that's a different, God shows up in a different way. Being self-reliant pulls our focus from the gardener. And it doesn't mean that we can't be self-reliant in some things. But don't let it be overall the contributing factor, if you want to say that. Self-reliance can crowd out and and crowd out the growth that Jesus wants to do in us. Uh, it, it can uh, hide it. It can make it disappear. Uh, and it's very easy for us to move through life past it when we don't see it or when we don't stop for a minute and realize uh, God is trying to teach us a lesson in what we are going through. We need to set our hearts and minds on things above. And when we truly, fully set our hearts on it, our mind is already there. <laughs> That's the good thing about it. And uh, be, man, determination to get alone with Jesus. I can't say that enough. Determination. Get alone with Jesus. Make time. Make, make space. Uh, we were talking about yesterday at a conference. Uh, there's so many squares in a day and, uh, you know, they give you like 24 squares or something. I don't know what it was in, in uh, you know, and when I looked at the 24 squares and how it breaks down into hours, how many hours uh, you work and how many hours you do this and that. And man, it, it's like, I need more squares. <laughs> but I mean, that's, see, that's how the devil works. He fills up your day and he fills up your mind. I don't know how many times I'd stop to pray and I, like my mind is full of everything else. Or when I'm trying to get a message together, I'm thinking about a car that won't start at work i mean it happens doesn't it you see how the devil uses those things though and then you forget about and then before you know it you turn around and like wait it's tomorrow wait it's friday <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> all right uh, we need to put our hearts and minds on things above be determined to get alone with jesus and man we have <laughs> the confidence in knowing that the gardener is capable of moving us through or healing whatever problem we have because he can do it on the spot. Jesus makes our physical and our mental healing possible when we put our time and focus in him and let him be the gardener of our life. Uh, man. <laughs> God is so good. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pray and then uh, 
Can I, what, how, what time? Can we do something weird for a few minutes? <laughs> All right. Uh, so if you got to go, it's fine. If you, if you don't, stay. Uh, you know, someone told me a story this morning, and, and I've been told many stories. And, uh, you know, I just want you guys to know that, you know, uh, you know Jesus loves you. He is real. He is God. He, he heals. Uh, he uh, does things in our life that we can't explain. Things go away. Sicknesses, illnesses go away. Um, I'm going to take just a second. Oh, I got a mic. Cool. And I'm going to use this mic so uh, people can hear online because when uh, there's an awkward pause when someone's talking online, I noticed that the other day. I was like, oh, I got to repeat what they say. So we're just going to use a mic. Uh, but I love to hear God stories Amen. where God has done something or changed something that, that you can't explain. Amen. So we're just going to do a few of those today. Just a few. So if you got one of those, raise your hand, and I'm going to bring the mic. And we're only going to spend like 10 minutes, so just make it uh, as quick as possible. But give us the God stories. I am the one who told him the story this morning. And you, oh, well, I, I told you. You told me one. Yeah. And I'm a mom, I told you. <laughs> anyway, for I don't know how long, I've had the sinus problem. And the doctors can't seem to find anything wrong. They put me on antihistamines and all kinds of stuff, and nothing seems to work. Well, Last week, when we were praying for Robin and her migraine, and thank you, Robin, for having the migraine, but I hope that it got better. Anyway, as we were praying, I had my hands out like this, and all of a sudden, this hand started to come back, and it touched my face. And it just stayed there until we were done praying. On the way home, my ear started to crackle, and it sounded like cellophane when, it's, when you rustle it. It was just really weird, and it did all that day, all the next day, and I kept feeling it like this, and it would crackle more and more, you know, when I, when I felt it. On Tuesday, I went to my sister-in-law's house, and she's into holistic medicine, and so I told her about it, and she said, Sharon, it, it sounds like something's breaking up. She said, you need to take turmeric. Well, God already told me that. I started turmeric a couple days before. But we put some, you know, some heat, uh, heated salt that was in a bag on my, on my ear and kept it there for a while. And... On the way home, it was still crackling, but the day after, it stopped, and it still stopped, but yesterday, I was at an arts and crafts show all day with a friend, and I sat at her table. Across the aisle was a scentsy lady, and she had her scented pots and everything all going, Normally, when I would get home from something like that, I would have sinus pressure for three days. Praise God, there's none. He did something in me, and I, I praise him for that. So most of you know that I have quit smoking. Yay! Woo! So it's been a little over a month. <laughs> Yesterday, I went out with one of my cousins, one of my mom's family. Um, we had uh, brunch, whatever, and um, she was asking for pictures. So this morning, I went looking around the house like a crazy person for all these pictures, you know, that she wanted to see. So as I'm going through some boxes, I open it up, and there's 
a cigarette machine in there with cigarette papers. No tobacco. So I pushed it at Chris and I said, throw this away. So I go into my bedroom and I've commenced on the top of my closet looking for more pictures. And lo and behold, there was an unopened pack of cigarettes in there. I stared at it for probably like five minutes. That pack of cigarettes is probably seven years old. Chris wasn't home, he was out getting the bread. So I immediately started pacing around the house. I didn't know what to do, I started crying, just pacing. So I, I was, went outside with the dogs and Chris pulls up and I'm like, oh, thank God Chris is here. So he looks at me and he goes, what is wrong with you? I go, I'm so stupid, I'm so dumb, why was I looking for those pictures, you know? And it, the devil was putting that in front of me, Amen. trying to get me to pick up a cigarette again. I didn't do it. <laughs> okay, I got a quick one. So last Tuesday, I was driving home from work, and I listened to K-Love, and Torn Wells has a song called Take It All Back. And every time that song comes on the radio, I blare it as loud as it'll go. And I'm singing away, and I'm jamming, and I'm worshiping while I'm driving. And I stop at a red light, and I'm still singing and worshiping and going crazy. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a Dearborn police officer sitting next to my car at the red light. I thought, uh-oh, because he could have very easily you know, pulled me over and said, look, you know, your radio is too loud, you know, here's a ticket. So I kind of smile and I'm looking at him and he's like this. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I said, oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, the other day we, we uh, had to call the furnace guy again. Three months ago they came to fix it. They put in a heat exchanger. I was so furious. Uh, I could have choked this guy. Aaron calls me and she said it's another $85. Cover it and give me up. Now this is all silent. All I could see was his face singing it. So I started singing it. It made me so happy. Got rid of all my anger. Amen. The point is, God is real. Get alone with Him, have some quiet time with him, and he can change things in your life. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you that, man, it's warm out. I love the warm, Lord. We thank you that uh, your presence was here, that you showed up today. We thank you for all those who are here. We pray for those who are not, Lord, that you touch their situation, touch their life in whatever way it needs to be touched, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed. Amen.